I have seen one too many gray steaks posted on social media and we're not talking about the inside of the steak being well done. We're talking about gray steaks on the outside that look like they have been boiled in a pot. So Frankie Boy aka Chef Frankie is here to show you some tips on how to make sure your steak is perfect. And it starts with the meat, of course. Now, the most important things here are how thick the steak is cut and how much fat there is on the steak. Here I have a one inch thick ribeye and a one and a half inch thick ribeye. This is a little too thick. These are the steaks that I will be selling on my free range meat company most likely. If, if the steak has a bigger eye, you can cut it thicker, but these are fairly small in the front, so the, the one inch is a better option in this case. Now, when the steak is really thick like this, you have a very high margin of error for cooking. When the steak's thin, you put it in the pan, it overcooks before you can even get a crust. So by doing this, yes, the cooking time is a bit longer, but it results in a perfect temperature if you do it properly. The fat on the steak obviously isn't something you can change. And this is what creates the crust. If there's no fat on the crust, you're not going to get the caramelization. This is because the fat distributes heat on the surface of the steak. So we can always just add fat, rendered fat, whether you're grilling or pan searing the steak to alleviate that issue. One more thing that having a really thick cut steak does is it makes it heavy. And when the steak is heavy, you put it in the pan and it weighs itself down, therefore putting more of the surface area in contact with the pan. I mean, you could replicate that by pushing down on it, but it's just a nice little thing people don't usually talk about. The ingredients to cook a steak are generally very minimal. Of course, we have the meat. Here I have grass-fed ribeye from Australia. The salt, I'm using a Celtic salt. I have a fine ground and a coarse ground salt. If you guys want to know what my favorite salt is, check out my Himalayan pink salt is bullshit video at the end here. There's also another video I did titled New York City style steak where I go into black pepper ratios and the flavor of black pepper on steak. So if you do like adding black pepper to your steak, check that out. Of course, we need an animal fat to cook the steak with. Here I have bison tallow. You can use beef tallow. I just have some extra bison tallow that I don't usually have on hand. The only reason I like this is because it's a little bit softer and easier to spoon out of the jar. Uh, the flavor, I don't actually like as much as beef tallow. And here I have some raw A2 salted butter. A2 is the type of casein protein in the butter. I'm going to do a video on dairy next week to explain this stuff to you guys. Butter from the farm. I mean, it smells like a barnyard sometimes. You can really smell the grass, the land. It's such a different food. It's so much more complex than regular butter. Uh, since this is raw butter, we're just going to put this on the end after we cook the steak and it'll melt slowly on the steak. For equipment, I have some rags here to pat the steaks dry. Of course, some tongs to flip the steak. If you guys saw my MasterChef clip on Good Day New York, I forgot to bring tongs, so I was flipping the steak with my hand. Uh, you can check that out on my Instagram. And it's also on my YouTube as well. Uh, this is a pan with a steel rack. This is because we're going to sear the steak to get a crust and then we're going to put it in the oven to finish cooking. Here we have a carbon steel pan. Guys, this is like a this is like a seven pound pan. Like if I had to defend myself with this, I couldn't because it's too heavy. Uh, but carbon steel is very similar to cast iron in the sense that it needs to be seasoned. It's non-stick. I like it a lot because it doesn't get as dirty as cast iron, although it is a bit more expensive. Again, guys, that is carbon steel. That's a French brand. Uh, I bought it on Amazon. You guys can check out my Amazon shop in the comments if you want to buy that. So of course we have to season our steak and there are various degrees you can season your steak. You could literally salt your steak a day before, let it dry on a rack overnight, dry out the surface real nice, or you could just season it beforehand. Uh, the best with minimal time invested is about an hour before cooking. That's how long it takes for the salt to travel about an inch through the meat. But we're doing this practically today, so we're just gonna season it and then cook it. So here, just the fine grain Celtic salt on the steak. This steak I actually already seasoned about an hour ago, and you know, there's a bit of water that's come out on the surface, so what we're gonna do here is just put it 
put it in the towel, dry it out real nice. And since I'm not eating two steaks tonight, we'll just cook one. Uh, this is slightly cold, it is out of the fridge. Uh, you do want the steak to be cold if it's a bit on the thin side, that reduces the margin of error on the cooking temperature, but it doesn't really matter. Warm or cold, up to you. So I have the stovetop on a medium high heat. The reason I like carbon steel so much is because of how conductive the pan is. I have never seen a pan heat up as quickly as carbon steel. That being said, it also cools off relatively quickly. Uh, cast iron would retain the heat better, but to me there's no purpose of retaining heat unless you're like cooking cornbread in an oven or something and you want a crust on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put maybe a tablespoon of tallow in here. And you don't, by no means do you have to use a carbon steel pan. I've done this with stainless steel. I've done this with cast iron. Oh man, I just started, I just started melting that bison fat and I smell the Great Plains. Holy shit, that is bad. <laughs> oh man, that smells like cow shit with hay in it. <laughs> oh God. You guys can see in the camera here, the pan just started smoking. That's what we want. Ideally with the lid so you don't splatter too much grease. But what's important is that you move the steak around. So we're just gonna wait a second. The reason you wanna move the steak around so much in the pan is because, you know, different parts of the pan have different heat distribution. And when you put the steak on one part of the pan, it cools it down. So if you move it around, you're keeping the heat distribution as even as possible. So basically we're just gonna flip this every 30 seconds or so until we have a nice dark brown crust. Okay, so now what I wanna do is just make sure I tap the steak to make sure the, the heat distribution is even on the surface. As you can see, like this part of the steak is gray and this part is brown. That means the surface of the steak is not evenly on the bottom of the pan. So by tapping it and making sure the pressure's even, I'm going to ensure even browning. And the reason you can't just press down on the steak is because when you press down on the steak, that doesn't allow fat to distribute the heat. If you push down on the steak, the fat goes away from under the steak and it doesn't distribute heat evenly. So by tapping, what you do is you tap it, it puts it in contact with the surface, and then when you release the tap, the fat goes back in and heats up that part of the steak. You know, you're not gonna get a much browner crust than this, at least in a pan. And this is the perfect color. It's like a deep brown, but not black or not dark brown at all. All right, so we're gonna take it out of the pan and put it onto our rack. That steak was only in the pan for maybe three or four minutes. The internal temperature of the steak is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It's literally raw. So what we need to do is put this in the oven and finish the cooking process. Uh, the Instant Read Thermometers Thermapen, I got this on Amazon, I think it was like 25 bucks. I don't usually use it myself because uh, I eat my steaks raw, but it's, it's good for people that actually cook their food. Now in regards to actual cooking temperature, most people want their steak anywhere from 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. 120 is completely red, hot red in the steak. 125 is red in the middle, pink to the edges. And 130 is pink throughout the steak. So 120, rare. 125, medium rare. And 130 is medium. Now you have to take the steak out of the oven or out of the pan before it reaches that final temperature because it continues to cook after you take it out. So if you want your steak to be 120 degrees, maybe take it out around 116, 117. So it's a lot of experimenting, but that's why the instant read thermometer is so useful. You can get a incredibly accurate cooking temperature every time you cook a steak. So all we're gonna do is oven on high broil and check the steak probably every three to four minutes. All right, sizzle, sizzle. 
center of the steak, we're at like 120 to 124. So after the steak cools off, I think we're gonna see a little bit of red in the middle. A lot of people will say you need to let the meat rest for as long as it cooked in order for the juices to set in the meat. But if you notice when the meat actually rests, juices come out. Someone did an experiment and noticed that the amount of juices that come out when the meat's resting is about the same as cutting into it initially. So there's no real difference. If you want to eat the meat as soon as you cook it, you can. Uh, I prefer eating the meat at room temperature anyway, so I do let the meat rest for five, 10 minutes. But what I do want to do is put some raw butter on it so it melts into the steak juices. So I think this is what most people will consider a perfect medium. It has pretty much no gray crust or ring on the outside, and it's like dark pinkish throughout the steak. No real red, so I wouldn't say this is rare in any way, but this is what most people consider medium rare. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sure my family will love this steak for dinner tonight. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, it's right next to the button, and share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me, just check out some of the other videos that I mentioned uh, throughout the video here. If you guys do want to check out some stuff I have in the comments, ranging from my Amazon shop to my Patreon, a bunch of different things. I recently launched a Kickstarter for Frankie's Free Range Meat, where you can pre-order both pemmican, jerky, as well as fresh meat beef boxes, all 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. Guys, I'm looking to make a lot of exciting nutrient-dense health products with my company, raising from canning our own fish to caviar. Super great stuff in the future that I've always wanted to do. So check that out. If you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health, you can shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com, or contact me through the forum on my website. That's down in the comments as well. You guys enjoy the rest of the weekend.